Although you may think that you'll be seeing more results in the gym based solely on the fact of how long you're spending there each day, in reality, you gotta realize that half that time is probably being wasted. What's up everyone? David here, we've got a new video for y'all today. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss on any new videos. Because remember, new videos on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So don't miss out. Now today, we are talking about the time spent in the gym. I just want to point out, it's not about the quantity of time spent there. It's about the quality. And too many times, I see so many of you spending hours on end at the gym, but realistically, is that necessary? Does more time spent at the gym equate to more gains? No. Look at the video that I previously posted. It goes into depth showing why more time spent in the gym is not gonna equate to more results. No, no, half the time, you're probably just wasting. Today, we're gonna go even more in depth about it. So to kick things off, we're gonna be using legs. You know, our typical leg day as an example, for those of you who might be training legs, some of you may not, but regardless, the reason why I'm choosing legs is because typically that's one of the workouts that take the longer amount of times. I don't know how many of y'all have ever pushed yourself through a good, hard leg workout, but safe to say, those leg workouts will take longer than, let's just say, a chest workout or an arm workout. You know, our legs, physically demanding, might just spend a little bit more time in the gym. But when I say a little bit more time, it doesn't mean that we have to be there for three, four, five hours on end. No, a lot of you have other things you got to do in life. Maybe you're a full-time student, you work a full-time job, you're a student, but you work a part-time job, internships, just whatever it may be. We all got obligations and responsibilities we got to cover throughout the whole day. We can't be allotting majority of our day or a good amount of it to the gym each and every day. We just got other things we got to take care of. So with the very limited time that we do have, how can we maximize those gains? How can we cut time in the gym, but still see the results that we want? Let's look at what a typical leg workout will look like for me. Again, I'm going to be using a lot of the examples of what have worked for me. Hopefully they all work for you. If they don't, tweak them a little bit based off of your individual needs. I always start my workout with squats, barbell back squats. Afterwards, I do some type of exercise that is still quad focused, that is some type of variation of a squat. So in this case, hack squats. Then I start supersetting different exercises, the different muscle groups that are still part of my legs. So in this case, back extensions supersetted with seated calf raises and leg curls supersetted with regular standing calf raises or just any variation of a calf raise where your knee is locked out. That's gonna be the sample workout that we're gonna be referring to throughout this video, but hopefully you all get the idea, plug in whatever leg exercises it is that you do or plug in any other exercise you do for any other muscle group. Number one, how can we save time in the gym? How can we cut our gym time in half but still see results. It's quite simply, you gotta go in with a workout program. All right. Too many times people go into the gym, they may have a general idea of what muscle groups are gonna be working, but they don't know the specifics about it. I may go into the gym and say, you know what, today is leg day, but I don't actually know what I'm gonna be doing for legs. I don't know what exercise I'm gonna be doing for my quads, which one's for hammies, which one's for calves, which one's for glutes, no, no, no. And it doesn't matter if it's legs or any other muscle group. You may say you wanna go in and start hitting your back, but okay, what should I do for my back? Should I do rows, should I do pull downs? should I do shrugs? You know, go in with a structured program. Already have your exercises lined up that you know you wanna do, so that way, when you get to the gym, you're not just there figuring out, huh, should I do bench press today? Ah, uh, no, the bench is taken. Should I do incline today? Yeah, I'll do incline, but should I do barbell? Should I do machine? Should I do dumbbell? No, no, all of that eats up time. It may not seem like a big deal, but you gotta take into account a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there, wandering back in the forest, figuring out what you're gonna do. All of that adds up. If we can cut those little things out, you'll be surprised at how much time you'll save at the end. And also, the fact that we actually do come in with a structured program that gives us a chance to actually really maximize our gains. Why? Because you know what it is that you have to work on. Let's just say, back to our leg workout. You're someone who struggles with hamstrings. You know, you need to bring them up to match your quads. If you don't write a structured workout program, what if all you're doing is majority quad exercises when you know you don't need it, when instead you should be doing more hamstring exercises so that way the back part of your leg could catch up and match the front. So again, structured workout program saves time because it helps you figure out what it is that you're gonna do ahead of time instead of figuring it out on the spot. And then two, you're still maximizing your gains because now you actually know where is it that you need to make more gains or which muscle groups do need a little bit more attention than others. 
Second point, how to cut time, your warm-ups. It is the first part of your workout. When you first walk into the gym, obviously you're gonna be warming up. But the thing is, people are overcomplicating it. They're doing too much. Your warm-up is not this grand scheme of exercises or this grand scheme of movements that you need to mandatorily do to get you the results that you want. Too many times, people are going in, they have to foam roll, they have to do their dynamic stretches, they have to do their banded exercises, they gotta warm up the shoulders, they gotta warm up the hips, they gotta loosen this up. There's just so many things that they do, but realistically, is it necessary? Depends on the person, depends on the workout, depends on the muscle group. Here's what we're talking about here. Leg day. My very first exercise are squats. So therefore, my warm up should be something that gets me ready for the squats. So why would I be doing rotator cuff exercises, warming up my shoulders, if I'm not even gonna be working them out. Now, if I'm stiff and I can't get underneath a squat bar, then yes, but that's on a person by person, case by case basis. But in general, your warm up should just be a couple of things that help you with that first exercise or that muscle group that you're gonna be working. So in this case, my warm up should be things that are gonna help me with my squat movement pattern or things to warm up my quads, my glutes, my hands, you know, just generally warming up those muscles that are associated and worked on with squats. If you're someone who's gonna go in on chest day and start doing your bench press, you know you have a good bench press workout coming up, you know that you wanna get nice and loose and rep out two plates, all right, that's all good. But what are the things that you're doing in preparation for it? What is your warm up for that consist of? If you're someone who's doing mobility exercises for your hips and you're foam rolling your quads and your hamstrings, stretching out your hammies before a bench press, why? That's just wasting time. That's not going to help you. Your warm up needs to be specific to the first movement that you're doing of that day, or your warm up needs to be specific to the first set of muscle groups that you're going to be warming up and utilizing in that given workout. All right. If you're working on bench press, don't focus on your lower body. If you are going to be working on your lower body, prioritize it during the warm up. Don't overcomplicate it. One of the quickest and best ways that you can warm up is simply by doing the exercise itself at a lighter weight and each time slowly and steadily increase the weight. I'm starting off with squats. Okay, what does my warm up consist of? I'm gonna start off with an empty barbell, 45 pounds, and just rep it out. I'm gonna throw on a 45 on each side, 135, get a couple reps with that. 225, a couple reps with that, and then I'll go ahead and move on to my top working set, whatever it may be, whether it be three plates or 275 regardless, and I'll go ahead and get my good working sets in. You do not need to do an excessive amount of warm-up sets. And also, you do not need to rest up to five to 10 minutes between warm-up sets. Hell, you don't have to rest that necessarily that long in between warm-up sets. Why? Why do we rest in the first place? We rest because we want our body to recover and get us ready to push ourselves again. But by definition of what a warm-up set is, you shouldn't even be having to fatigue yourself in the first place. Warm-up sets should not be fatiguing. It's just getting you ready for those sets that are gonna be fatiguing. So once I'm done with my set with a 45 pound bar, right away I'm throwing on one plate. Once I do my rest with that, right away I'm throwing on two plates, repping it out, and then afterwards I can go ahead and throw on that heavy weight, and then I do my working sets. Now you rest in between the good working sets but those warm-up sets they do not require so much physical capacity and they do not require so much rest in between each one because they are not fatiguing continuing on with the concept of a warm-up third point i labeled it as additional warm-ups because here's the thing after i do my squats i move on to hack squats some of you who maybe let's just say are working out on your chest you may start off with bench press and most of the time what do you do afterwards you do some type of incline press. If you're doing your back workout, what do you start off with? Let's just say any type of rowing motion, what do you do next? Maybe some other rowing motion or maybe some type of pull down, like a lat pull down, pull ups, something like that. The point is, you're moving on from one exercise that works a certain set of muscle groups and you're moving on to another exercise that is working the exact same muscle groups. So in this case, I'm moving on from squats, which primarily focuses on my glutes and my quads. And then I'm moving on to hack squats, which again, work on my glutes and my quads. Many people, when they move on to that second exercise, they feel the need to start off light. And then they increase the weight as they go with each and every set. 
why do you have to add more warm-up sets for that second exercise? Those muscle groups are already warmed up. You just worked them out. When I'm doing my hack squats, I don't have to start off light, do a couple warm-up sets, and slowly increase the weight. My quads and my glutes are already fired up. They're already warmed up from the squats that I previously did. I can go ahead and jump straight into my working sets with that. Same thing with your chest workouts. Your incline presses, you don't need to start off light and then increase as you go. The fact that you already did a couple of good working sets with regular bench press, your chest, your front delts, your triceps, they're good to go. They're fired up. They're warmed up. Your shoulders are nice and loose. Once you move on to the incline, go ahead and throw on that working weight. You're good to go. You don't need to warm up any more than you already are. So it just goes to show you, additional warm up sets are just being added on when they're realistically not needed. And all that's doing is one, not getting you any more results because they're light, they're warm up. You're not pushing hard enough to the point to promote any muscle growth. And two, it's just wasting time. So think about it. If you would have done two warm-up sets and replaced them with two working sets, boom, you just saved all that amount of time. And at the end of the day, all the little time right there, here and there, it all adds up at the end. We're trying to save time and still maximize growth. You save time by cutting out those sets and you'll maximize your growth by replacing them with good working sets. Fourth tip on how we can cut time in the gym. And this one honestly is the most important one to me. This is the one that has benefited me the most. Again, this is just me personally. Everyone's gonna be a little different, but supersetting. Many of you know what it is, but you're not going about it correctly. What supersetting is, is doing two exercises back to back with no rest in between. Now, how exactly are you doing that wrong? You do it incorrectly if you're doing two exercises that work the same muscle groups back to back. So continuing on with our leg examples, you may be doing a set of squats, superset it with leg extensions. You may do a set of leg press, superset it with a set of walking lunges. What do all those exercises have in common? They're all primarily using the quads, okay? You do not want to superset two exercises that work the exact same muscle group because the whole intention here is that you're doing one set for one muscle group and then back to back with another set of another muscle group and you can go back and forth. While one is working, the other is resting. But if you're working the same muscle group on both, then where's that rest? Essentially, all I'm doing is now I'm working one continuously long set of quads with no rest in between. So did I really do two sets of quads or did I just do one very long set? And not only that, but if you were to do two exercises back to back for the same muscle group, that second exercise, there's no way you're gonna be able to push yourself as hard as you could. Why? Because you're already going into that second exercise fatigued from how hard you push yourself during the first exercise. That's why you want to go ahead and superset two opposing muscle groups. Opposing means opposite. So most commonly, let's just say arm day. Biceps, superset it with triceps. Go ahead and do some tricep pushdowns right away, back to back, no rest in between. Grab those dumbbells, start curling. You see, how hard I push myself with the tricep pushdowns will not affect how hard I'm pushing myself with the dumbbell curls. Why? Because the same muscle is not being used. However, if I were to do a set of bicep curls with the dumbbells, let's just say alternating, and I superset that now with barbell curls, well, those barbell curls, I'm realistically not gonna be getting much out of it because I'm already going into it fatigued from the dumbbell curls that I previously did. So there you have it. You wanna do two opposing muscle groups. But I previously said, opposing means opposite. So whereas in one is bending your elbow, the other one is extending it. It doesn't always necessarily have to be opposites. It just has to be two muscle groups where one is not affecting the other. So most commonly, what I do on my leg workouts is I superset hamstrings and calves. They're not necessarily opposites. Hamstrings, what do they do? They bend your knee, so the opposite would be your quads because your quad is what extends your knees. Your calves realistically do not affect your knee much. They, they do help flex it a little. That means they do help it bend a little, but you know, that's for the nerds, that's for anatomy, that's a different video. But realistically, you get what I'm saying here. How hard you push yourself with seated calf raises are not gonna affect how hard you can push yourself on back extensions because one is not gonna fatigue the other muscle group. Same thing when I do leg curls. I can go ahead and jump on the seated leg curl machine and I can rep that out and really get a good pump and a good burn on those hamstrings. And afterwards, I can go ahead and jump on the leg press and do some calf raises on there, get the full stretch, get the full contraction on those calf raises and I won't get affected. Why? Because my calf raises are not gonna involve my hamstrings. So therefore I can keep pushing and then vice versa. The calves are not gonna affect how hard I push on my leg curls. 
So you just need to put two exercises back to back where one muscle group will not affect the other. So let's just say if we're doing bench press in between sets, go ahead and hit some lateral raises. If we're doing our rows like this, okay, superset it with something for abs. If you want to continue on with the leg day, okay, after I do my hack squats, go ahead and superset it with a set of calf raises. That is perfectly fine. As long as one does not affect the other and it's not the same muscle groups being worked back to back, you're good to go. It will save so much time. And lastly, your rest time. Now, whereas in supersetting has been the biggest game changer for me in terms of saving time, for many of you, your rest time may be the biggest game changer for you. Why? Because you're spending way too much time resting in between sets. And although yes, rest is necessary, you're overdoing it. You wanna know why you're overdoing it? Because you're getting distracted. What do you do in between sets? You go on your phone. You're scrolling and that scrolling is addicting. You gotta stay off the phone in between sets. The whole point of resting is to get your body ready and recover to push hard during the next set. How long does that take? Realistically, if you push yourself for a good hard working set, three to five minutes is more than enough time to get you fully recovered and ready to go for the next set. But many of you, you're pushing towards 10 minutes because you're getting so sidetracked with the fact that either you're on your phone or maybe there's outside distraction, you're filming someone else, you're talking to someone else, you get so drawn into the conversation you're having with your friend when instead you can be actually doing another set. You see, it's the little things like this. You're just abusing the amount of time it takes you to recover. You're hitting the right amount of time, but you're overdoing it. Go ahead and set a timer if needed. Again, three to five minutes. If you're really out of shape and you really have bad cardio after a set of squats, okay, maybe six, seven minutes, but over time, that time should be decreasing, all right? It shouldn't be taking you more than five minutes to fully recover. Yeah, you might start feeling more fatigued. Your legs might start feeling a little more wobbly after the second set of squats and you know you still have one more, but that's okay. But the fact that you think you have to spend even more time, up to twice the amount of time necessary, Nah, 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 no wonder you're spending so much time in the gym. No wonder you're there for two or three hours at a time when you can't be there for an hour, hour and a half max. That rest time is eating up majority of this time. So let's just take this into account. I got one, two, three, we'll just group those together. Four, we'll group these two together. Four exercises. And let's just say we wanna do three good working sets of each. All right, you do the math. That's 12 working sets. We do the top end of that rest time. I said three to five minutes. Five minutes of rest at most times 12 sets. Do the math. That's 60 minutes. That's a whole hour that you're at the gym just resting. The rest the amount of time in the gym hopefully is going towards actually pushing hard with the weights. But imagine if you're going even more than those five minutes. So there you have it everyone. Those are just five tips that are really gonna help you cut your workout time in half while still not risking the amount of gains that you could be making. A lot of it comes down to just knowing what it is that you have to do once you get into the gym. Make your program ahead of time. Make your warm up specific to whatever that first movement that you're gonna do or that first muscle group that you're gonna be working. If you're moving on from one exercise to the other, come to understand, do you really need to continue to warm up or are you already good to go? superset opposing muscle groups or one muscle group that does not affect the other. Don't be working two quad exercises back to back. Don't do two bicep exercises back to back and actually time your rest time and don't abuse the amount of time you're spending just scrolling in between sets. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you did and comment down below any tips that you may have that can help others cut down on their workout time all while not cutting down on the amount of results that they can see. Now, let's try to help each other out. Be sure to comment down below also any other video suggestions you'd like to see me do, whether it be about mindset, motivation, nutrition, diets, workouts, programs, whatever it is, comment down below. I'd be more than happy to help you all out. Be sure to subscribe not just to this channel, but my girlfriend's channel, and our couple's channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. Because remember, new videos on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So don't miss out. And then Instagram and TikTok, same thing. Be sure to follow me on my accounts, girlfriend's accounts, couple's accounts. I put all the links down in the description below. With that being said, I'll catch y'all next time.